Hello everyone, uh, I'm here in France on vacation and as I'm here in France I thought it is fitting to do a short brief uh, vlog on photovoltaic as photovoltaic was discovered by French physicist uh, Alexander Edmonton Becquerel uh, in 1839. So here we go. So solar energy is being created by a nuclear fusion that is happening on the sun um, and basically all life on earth is only possible because of this nuclear fusion on the sun. Um, to better understand the scale of the distance of the sun, the size of the sun to the earth, I'm going to build a small scale model which is also available on the uh, NASA website and I'm going to provide um, the link in the description below to this scale model from NASA. So I had to use um, the watercolors of my children and they actually helped me a little bit draw it. Um, so this is the size of the sun. Let's just add here. Sun. Mm, not the best colors. And here. Earth. And the equivalent size is about this. Okay, so let's go outside and put it now the distance uh, in scale. Okay, this is now the scale model. Over there you have the sun, over there is the earth. And they are 150 million kilometers apart. And for the light to get from the sun to the earth, it takes more than eight minutes. And as mentioned, all life on earth depends on the sun which is 150 million kilometers from Earth. And again, here you see the size of the sun as a scale in scale to Earth. These are uh, now approximately 20 meters apart uh, to symbolize or to uh, represent the scale in, in terms of distance. And size-wise, Earth uh, is... The blue dot just behind the nail. So considering um, the scale model uh, that we just looked at, um, it's obviously clear that the sun radiates and emits huge amounts of uh, energy. Um, this energy is constantly flowing throughout the solar system and, and towards Earth. Um, and impacting weather, uh, wind, waves, uh, life on Earth in general. Um, in fact, pretty much all of the energy on Earth is directly or indirectly solar energy. Even fossil fuels are indirectly um, solar energy. Likewise, even hydropower. Uh, if it wasn't for the sun, you would not have uh, water condensation or and, and then rain and therefore you wouldn't have the, the possibility to have hydropower. Uh, the same with wind power. You would not have uh, winds in the form that we have without the sun. So pretty much all of the energy we, that we use, except maybe for nuclear energy, is either directly or indirectly uh, solar energy. 
Um, so let's look now more on the photovoltaics. So what I've done here is I've used again the colors of my children and I've tried to illustrate a semiconductor of a solar cell. And basically they're made up of three layers. The top layer is made up of silicon and a tiny amount of phosphorus. Ph phosphorus has more electrons. So it has a, an excess of electrons free to move around and make it more conductive. That's why it's called negative type and it's negatively charged um, so because of the more electrons the thin bottom layer contains silicon and an element like boron which has fewer electrons than silicon so this one has fewer electrons to move around is less conductive when light wave hits the solar cell in wavelengths between 350 to 1140 nanometers the light waves are absorbed in the middle uh, layer and basically what happens is that this light wave knocks loose an electron and the electron moves around and actually is attracted to, to the top layer and the hole or the positive electron is moving to the bottom layer and this basically continues throughout the p process of light hitting the silicon uh, semiconductor and the solar cell and this in turn creates electricity this is um, a very basic illustration of how a solar cell works. So since the discovery of Alexander Becquerel, when he basically discovered that when he placed silver chloride in an acid solution and exposed it to sun sunlight, the platinum electrodes attached to it generated electricity, we've come a long way. Um, the PV modules, the uh, solar cells um, are nothing comparable uh, to back then. The exciting part is that we're making annually or constantly significant progress. Um, in laboratories, PV modules have efficiencies of in the range of 50%. Uh, commercially, typically, PV modules are still below the 20% uh, efficiency. But this is great to, to sort of see that there is still so much potential so costs are coming down efficiency um, go up the cost per kilowatt hour of uh, pv uh, produced uh, electricity comes down so these are exciting news um, yeah and this was a brief vlog <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,